Now, the pictures you're seeing on the screen at the same time, of course, are President Trump in Texas listening to various border protection um, staff talking about the importance of necessity of a, ball, of a wall. Meanwhile, more than 30 aviation unions, following on from that last report, sent a letter to the President, Nancy Pelosi, and Mitch McConnell, urging, uh, urging them to act now because the human and economic consequences are getting worse. Sarah Nelson is president of the Association of Flight Attendants and uh, joins me now. So when I look at the number of areas that are affected, next-gen training, certifications, air traffic control, NTSB, um, how, how are your members affected in a sense of you're, they're not losing a paycheck directly? Well, we're not losing a paycheck directly yet, although the airlines are already telling us that they have not been able to deliver aircraft, and that means they have had to cancel routes. So at a certain point, that does become about our jobs as well and losing pay as well and facing furlough as well. But I'll tell you something, Richard. The reason that the airlines are flying today is because the frontline employees made sacrifices in all of those bankruptcies. And on the first day of those bankruptcies, even in that whole host of horribles, the first thing that is done in that bankruptcy is to order that the paychecks continue because they understand that there's no way to restructure, there's no way to keep moving unless the workforce is paid. This is outrageous. And people are going to have to make decisions for their families. And what that's going to do is it is going to stretch the ability for these essential employees to do the work. These essential employees, don't forget, are also not being supported by the other people who are not considered essential employees. And I'll tell you something. After 9-11, my profession changed forever. We became aviation's last line of defense. And we count on every single layer of aviation security. That is not in place today. We are less secure right. and less safe today, and our members are going to work today under those conditions, and the traveling public is flying with us under those conditions. Safety and security is non-negotiable. They need to get the government open and then continue this debate. The, the president, you, you know the arguments, backwards, upside down, inside out. There's no point in me rehearsing them. At the fundamental end of the day, this is a political difference in which your members and the air traffic controller you just had. Frankly, I'm flying tomorrow night to London, and the last thing I want to do is think about some overtired, worried air traffic controller who's flying, who, who's, who's managing it, stressed because he, he didn't get, or she didn't get paid. Yeah, that is exactly right. We need these people focused on their primary safety and security functions. We don't need them worrying about the safety and security of their own families and how they're going to provide for them. This is outrageous. Take the workers out of the debate. The fact that we are being held hostage and put in the middle of this is just unacceptable. Right. But isn't that the, I mean, you're a union, you're a negotiator. If you look at the way these two are negotiating, Donald Trump on the one side, uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer on the other, you've only, they're, they're, fight, they're, they're negotiating for the big prize as they see it. Don't you see that? Well, that may be true, but in negotiations, you also agree to a set of facts uh, to negotiate together. And here, these facts mean that we're putting certain safety and security in jeopardy in order to gain additional uh, security at a southern border wall. There are many points of entry, and today the system is stressed, and those other points of entry are not being manned like they should be. The workforce is not there to deal with them like they should be. So we can't trade a certain set of safety and security that is working uh, for one that we want to have. That just doesn't work. Negotiations are about problem solving. They're not about brinksmanship. That never gets you to a deal. That's the president's, that is the president's modus operandi. That is, as he would say, the art of the deal. Uh, not quite zero-sum game, but pretty much pretty close to it. Well, I think that w what we need to do is get together and come up with solutions. And it's certainly important to talk about uh, southern border security. Uh, we would agree with that as well. And we think that there needs to be some good solutions there. But you don't hold hostage the safety and right. security of the rest of the country in order to get it done. That doesn't make any sense. The very heart of this debate is about our security. And we should not be weakening the rest of our security in this process. Sarah, it's always good to see you. Thank you for taking the time and coming to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.